The Geo Archon has returned for his third banner, and many people are likely curious as to whether or not they should roll for him. In this video, we will explain his worth as a unit, so you know if you should spend your Primo Gems. Before you wish. As always, if you enjoy a character for reasons like their voice actor, aesthetic, or personality, these videos are by no means meant to stop you from spending your Primo Gems on them. Instead, they should prepare you for the type of problems that you'll need to solve or work around to meet your gameplay expectations. Zhang Li is a Geo Polearm unit who functions as a shielder in most teams. He can be played as a sub DPS if players build him for damage instead of building him for shielding, and can also be used as a physical DPS with Crescent Pike or other weapons. He not only has the strongest shield in the game if built for shielding, but also provides some utility in the form of resistance shred and crowd control if players use his burst. Zhongli's strength lies mostly in his shielding. Shielding is very valuable in Genshin Impact if players are facing enemies who can interrupt them, as interruption can mess with players' rotations and lead to an overall DPS loss. For example, Ganyu takes 2 seconds to charge up a shot, and if she gets interrupted, then she won't be able to fire off a Frost Flake arrow. This makes Zhongli a very good unit for DPS units who need to avoid interruption to deal damage, such as Ganyu, Zhao, Hu Tao, and Yoimiya. Zhang Li also allows players to simply not dodge, which also increases damage. Any time which players spend dodging is time spent potentially dealing damage. This aspect of his kit is frequently overlooked, leading to a general perception that Zhang Li is a strict DPS loss on many teams. In reality, Zhang Li can sometimes patch up gameplay issues that would cause damage losses. While he's not strictly a DPS gain, he helps avoid other DPS losses. On the flip side, this makes him less valuable for units who don't particularly care about interruption, have a significant amount of crowd control, or are frequently able to iframe through the damage that enemies deal with their bursts. One example is a reverse melt team with Kaya, Rosaria, Zhangling, and Bennett. The characters in the team use their bursts back to back to gain a lot of invincibility frames, and their bursts persist whether or not they get interrupted. For example, Zhangling's burst will continue rotating around her whether or not she is staggered. Another team archetype that values Zhongli less is freeze teams, where enemies are frozen for a majority of the time and can't interrupt the active character anyway. This also makes Zhongli's value a bit dependent on player skill. If players are able to dodge through all enemy attacks, then Zhongli's shield will be less valuable, as players wouldn't have been interrupted or have taken damage anyway. However, if they lack the ability to dodge, then Zhongli will offer better returns for that player. Zhongli's resistance shred is also appreciated, although one of his major flaws is that he's almost always a suboptimal support option in terms of how much damage he gives DPS units. Zhongli's 20% resistance shred will generally boost damage by around 17% if the DPS units lack any other source of resistance shred. This pales in comparison to units like Kazuha and Bennett, who can increase a unit's damage by 50 or even 100%. Zhongli also offers his personal damage to teams that he's on, but building him for personal damage forces him to sacrifice shield strength. His personal damage also isn't amazing. While he can nuke quite hard with his burst if built properly, his DPS will generally pale in comparison to other sub-DPS units like Beidou or Zhangling. However, even with these flaws, Zhongli can still serve as a comfort unit for highly invested players who have minimal issues clearing the Spiral Abyss right now and don't need the extra damage provided by other supports. Another one of Zhongli's major flaws is that he can interfere with reactions. For example, in a reverse vaporize team, enemies need Hydro applied to them for the Pyro unit to vaporize their damage. But if Zhongli's pillar hits enemies with a Hydro aura, then he could potentially remove that aura and make the Pyro units unable to vape. Geo is weak to Hydro, which makes this issue rare, but it is still possible. Overall, Zhongli's value is pretty dependent on what team's players use and how mechanically skilled they are. Players should first consider whether or not the teams even have use for Zhongli before rolling. If their teams do have use for Zhongli, they should consider whether other shield units would be functional replacements. For example, Diona can also offer a decently strong shield, in addition to healing and cryo energy. This can potentially be more valuable for certain teams, like Eula teams, over the stronger shielding that Zhongli provides. A significant portion of Zhongli's value lies in his shield, but if players already have a good enough shielder for their teams, then Zhongli will have decreased value. If players both need a powerful shielder and can't use another shielder as a suitable replacement, 
then Zhongli will be a good pickup. But if both conditions can't be fulfilled, then players might not get as much value out of Zhongli. As for Zhongli's constellations, Constellation 1 is generally not very useful for a shielding build, but can increase his damage if players are planning to play him as a sub DPS. C2 massively increases his utility as it decreases his rotation length. Casting his burst, then casting his shield will generally take more than 5 seconds. With C2, this time can be cut down significantly, leaving more time for the DPS units on his teams to deal damage. C3 is generally useless for most teams, but can be used in the microwave team comp, composed of Zhongli, Geo Traveler, Bennett, and Zhangling, where the resonance damage from Zhongli's pillars is not insignificant. C4 can be useful for longer crowd control, but the extended petrification is made less useful by Zhongli's own shield, which prevents even unpetrified enemies from dealing much damage to him and his teammates. C5 is useful for sub DPS Zhongli where he uses his burst. If he is not using his burst, this constellation is useless. C6 makes Zhongli a healer. However, this can be useless if players already have a strong enough shield and can be actively detrimental to Hu Tao teams, since Hu Tao needs to remain under a certain HP threshold to maximize her damage. So, when should you roll for Zhongli? Players should roll for Zhongli if they play characters with significant amounts of field time that need to remain uninterrupted to deal damage, or play characters that drain their own HP, such as Ganyu, Yoimiya, Hu Tao, and Zhao. Players should also roll for Zhongli if they are unable to dodge, either through poor device performance or lower mechanical skill. They can also roll for Zhongli if they are already invested enough to clear the Spiral Abyss, as Zhongli won't increase their damage, but will make their clears more comfortable. When should you not roll for Zhongli? Players shouldn't roll for Zhongli if they play units or teams that don't value shielding, such as quick swap teams or freeze teams, which possess a significant amount of invincibility frames and crowd control respectively. They also might not want to roll for Zhongli if they are already skilled enough to predict and react to enemy attacks effectively. Lastly, they might not want to roll for Zhongli if they play teams that require specific auras to be on enemies, as Zhongli can interfere with these elemental auras. As a quick summary, here's a list of Zhongli's pros and cons. He's cheap to build, since he only needs HP main stat pieces and a 3 star weapon for a shield bot build. He has flexibility in builds and can be built for shielding, sub DPS, or built as a main DPS. He possesses one of the few sources of Geo and Animo Resistance Shred in the game via his shield. He can make players' abyss runs much more comfortable, and his shield provides interruption immunity and makes players have to dodge less, both of which lead to DPS increases. His Geo element can interfere with reactions. Other supports will generally buff DPS to a greater extent. Other shielders in the game can provide a shield and specific utilities that he can't provide, such as Diona with her cryo particle generation and healing at C0. His burst animation is long and can potentially extend rotations, which can decrease overall team damage. And he typically won't increase damage by much for players who are already highly skilled at the game. Thanks for watching this quick overview of the Kitching Mains Theory Crafting staff's thoughts on Zhongli. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments, and we will do our best to answer.